One of the top tickets OSHA's writing right now in Oregon is lack of fall protection training for your employees. And then, of course, the question always comes up, how often do I have to do it, every year? And I'm like, the rule says, if you can not show the ability to do it right or your job ch changes completely. You know, you go from being a, an electrician to a, a, you know, a framer. What do I think you do? I have companies in this town that are so safety minded. Every time they start a new job, they buy the boys pizza for lunch, they have me in and I do the one hour class. I got guys with this company that have been through my class 12, 15 times, okay? And every time they come up to me, they say, oh, I forgot that. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with doing it, you know, every year. You know, when you have your big safety meeting, I think more is better, that's me. You know, I've done classes where I've gone in and done the class. 30 days later, they hired a bunch of people. They had me redo the class. People couldn't even do the fall calculations. The ones that just went through my class a month ago. So I think it's a constant evolving thing. Fall protection is two things. It's a series of numbers and it's a series of mistakes. We need to get the numbers right and we need to take the mistakes out of the picture one by one. And those mistakes are, are very valuable because they, they roll, they're like a snowball, they roll big. Once one happens and another one happens, next thing you know, you're, you know, you're hurt really bad and you're hanging there. And so I really think that they need to know what the consequences are of taking a shortcut, what the consequences are of, of just not paying attention to the rules or how to put it on or manufacturer's recommendations. I think you need to know that. If a person does not know how to put a harness on or inspect their equipment, they shouldn't be out there in a situation like that. I believe it's absolutely critical. And then what training teaches uh, the most is how to inspect the equipment on a daily basis before each use. If you look at the webbing, um, identify any, you know, any problems so that piece of equipment can be taken out of service. Once they know how to use properly, it's not just for them, it's also encouraging others to, uh, to use it as well. So it goes across the board, you know, like we always talk about if one of you guys don't want to use it, look what's going to happen. The other one's going to probably try to repeat that too. So that's a better, what if somebody gets injured, how are you going to feel? So really, don't, let's not ever set a bad example, let's have a good example. So I want to make sure that, you know, and that's, let's not look down upon somebody who learning how to use it. Let's make sure that we have a proper training and train it properly and use it. It's going to be, there's nothing to be embarrassed about it. There's nothing to be, it's part of the, like, before we use it, let's, let's learn it. Let's learn how it works because that's the only way it's effective. If you don't know how to use it, I think it's almost pointless, you know. It's actually more confusing to people because they don't know what it is, you know. So, yeah, definitely want to make sure uh, proper training is required. I remember one time up in Longview, Washington, and I was back on the job site, uh, an individual fell, and he was the greeter holding his fall protection equipment at the gate as employees came into work. That's training. He was there because he listened, he delivered, and he was there to prompt other employees. I think your best trainers are examples that have knowledge about what they're talking about because unless they understand the recognition of the hazard, the selection and application of the equipment, the training on that equipment to other employees is well listened by your peers as opposed to somebody who shows up wearing the tie on the job site. Your peers are important and they make a difference.